Right now on Movie Review Talk, we got Spider-Man. We have Mary Poppins. We have Natalie Portman and Julia Roberts is back. Hey there, movie fans. It's Movie Review Talk only on Collider. I'm your host, Scott Movie Mance. Every week, we review the new movies. We pick a Blu-ray for something you might have missed. We pick something that's streaming. This week's show is a little different. We're just going to review not just the new movies in theaters this weekend. We're going to jump ahead to some big movies because there's so much coming out this time of the year. Here's the beauty. Here's what you have to know right now. No spoilers. Well, Hardly any spoilers, but very little, very little. Nothing that's going to ruin the movie. And every week, I'm joined by two guest critics. This week, I am joined by one, by choice, because she is my all-time fave, the one, the only, my good friend, Mara Reinstein. She is my film festival buddy. True. We confirmed. have done Sundance together. Yep. Toronto. Yep. South by Southwest. Yep. Telluride. Yep. Can. Yep. And here we are in the Collider studio. You flew from New York to L.A. L to be here. Literally got on Uber from the airport to these studios just for Movie Man. I cannot thank you enough for this. That is how it's much true, you, you care. Can't. Now, you, you're the film critic for Us Weekly. That's true. You're a film writer for Parade. That's true. And you have your own website, Mara movies.com dot com where you can see everything read everything that she does and what's your claim to fame with the uh, howard stern oh i won five thousand dollars on the howard stern show <laughs> by playing an 80s music trivia contest with baba Bowie, <laughs> and i donated the money and howard stern wrote me a thank you note Thank you very much. Well, I see. Now, if that doesn't give you <laughs> credibility to talk about movies here on Movie Review Can Talk. Can we talk a little 80s does. music while we're at it? We can, we'll get to that at right. some point. But right, right. now, we're going to get right to it with Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, as you can tell by my shirt, wearing a John Romita Sr. Jim Mooney t-shirt. Yes, I am a big Spider-Man fan. And this movie, directed by Bob uh, Perchetti, Peter Ramsey, Rodney Rothman, produced by Phil Lord and Chris Miller. Uh, the, the voiceover cast is Shamik Moore, Jake Johnson, Haley Steinfeld, Mahershala Ali, Nicholas Cage, Katherine Hahn. The list goes on and on. Move over, Peter Parker. There is a new Spider-Man in town, Miles Morales. But wait, there's a whole bunch of spider people, even a spider ham, a pig, go figure, uh, when other dimensions collide to stop a sinister threat. I'm a big Spider-Man fan. I don't know about you, but what did you think of Into the Spider-Verse? Okay, I'm a big Spider-Man fan. I even like the Andrew Garfield Emma Stone version, and not okay. just because I love Emma Stone. Mm -hmm. I, I like that as well. This one, it didn't do it for me. I'm I'm not even going to guess. I know you loved it. I could just have a feeling because of that t-shirt. <laughs> but I felt like this movie was so niche that it's strictly for adults who dress up and go to Comic-Con. Okay. That's how I felt. It was so insidery. It's just like a lot. It just you know, inside joke after inside joke up until the very end. And I like the story, but it just gets so frenetic at the end. And it just it was a little it was a little strange. And it was so much into the mythology of Peter Parker that, like I said, you really have to be a fan to love this movie. Okay, what about the animation? Animation was good. I mean, I don't go to movies for the quality of animation. I feel like we're past that. We're in 2018. Animation was good, if that's your thing. Well, I mean, didn't you think that the animation in this film was different than the usual computer animation that you see from, like, the Pixar films or the DreamWorks movies? Yes, but that's not going to get me into a theater. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay, I will agree with you on this point. Okay. Yes, Into the Spider-Verse is definitely, it's very inside baseball. Yes. The more you love Spider-Man, the more you know Spider-Man, the more you will love this movie. To that extent, it is the very best Spider-Man movie of them all because of including the way, live action. It, uh, well, of course, I'm including live action. But here's here's why. Here's why. Okay. The caveat is that if you love Spider-Man, then this movie is a Spider-Man fan's ultimate fantasy. Yes. If I can quote the comic book title, where Peter Parker and Spider-Man first appeared back in 1962. And again, I am a diehard fan. I've been a fan since I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. You know, the movies have been hit or miss for me. Although I did like the Andrew Garfield. Field Emma Stone version, I still felt that Spider-Man 2 with Tobey Maguire from 2004, June 30th, that is the ultimate Spider-Man movie because that is a Spider-Man movie for everyone. Right. What I like. It's a great movie. What I see, it's a yeah, great it movie. It is a great movie. I it's, love that movie. It's just a great movie. Yep, it is. But the way 
the way, you know, for, for decades, there was only one Spider-Man in town. That was Peter Parker. And then in more recent years, since 2011, you opened up the universe to Miles Morales in the ultimate Spider-Man universe mm -hmm. where, where Peter Parker in that universe died. But then you have the one shot with Spider-Ham, Peter Porker. Uh, you have Spider-Noir, you have Spider-Gwen. You have all these different Spider-People. And the brilliance of this movie is the way that Phil Lord and Chris Miller, who are producers, but they're, they've been so vocal about their support of the film, I feel like they actually you know, had more to do than just producing the movie. Sure. Um, they, they, it was so clever and smart the way it brought all these spider people together. Was it though? It was, it was. I mean, listen, like when you see a film like Spider-Man 3, yeah. okay, which is probably the which least- Which Spider-Man, the, the 2007? Yes, okay, that was the 2007. Yeah. Okay. okay, that movie tried to do too much and the movie, it felt strained. Well, it it felt had strained. that one had too many villains right, in it. Right. This one only had the one. But. It had a lot of characters. It was yes. an ensemble of Spider-Man yes. people. It was. So, so what I when I say the brilliance of this movie is that where Spider-Man three, like it felt like it tried too hard to do too much. I felt like there was something seamless and organic and natural in the way that the story did bring all these Spider people together. Now, the other thing about this is that that you have like young Miles Morales, mm -hmm. who's an Afro-Latino. And then you have Peter Parker, who's Peter Parker. And then you have Spider-Gwen, who's a woman. And then you have, you have so much diversity and gender equality represented on the sure, screen in this film. Sure, sure. Like, I'm, I'm not gonna rail against gender equality, but I'm just saying the story itself didn't do much for me. It felt long to me. And again, I mean, uh, you're a huge Spider-Man fan. If you're a Spider-Man fan, man, you will love this movie. If you are on the edge, it's going to, you're gonna get restless and it's gonna be a little much. There's a lot of t talk about the space time continuum with Peter Parker's and it's just, all right, get to the pig already. I, I just. Uh, spider pig, yeah. spider hand, spider. <laughs> all right. Listen, again, you know, the way that Phil Lord and Chris Miller did the, the Lego movie, which mm -hmm. they directed. I love the Lego I movie. I love the Lego yep. movie. I mean, that was very meta. And I feel like in a lot of ways, Spider-Verse is also very meta. Uh, but I do agree that the more, the less you know about Spider-Man, the more of a challenge you're gonna have embracing the film. But the, the flip side to that is that where the film really does soar is that anyone watching, in one way or another, they are going to see themselves represented on the big screen. Now, you'll have the younger demo uh, gravitating towards Miles Morales. Sure. You'll have women going towards Spider-Gwen. People, you know, my age or, or, you know, maybe younger, a little younger, will gravitate towards Peter Parker. And in this movie, you know, without giving anything away, this doesn't give anything away, the Peter Parker that we see is, he's an older, a uh, man, he's broken. He's going through a massive. That was my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> See, that was my favorite part of it the movie was. too. Yeah. So here's a guy who's going through a midlife yes. crisis. I completely related to Me, that yeah, character. Yeah. And I know you know why. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, but at the same time, there's something for everyone. And I thought about it because I've now seen this movie twice. Okay. And I see into the Spider Verse. I see this movie as the "It's a Wonderful Life" of Spider-Man movies. That is a bold statement, man. It is, and here's why. Yeah. Again, this doesn't spoil anything, but you have sort of this alternate timeline. You have Peter Parker is George Bailey, and Miles Morales is Clarence. And again, I can't spoil too much, but the way that Miles helps Peter Parker, and uh, it's it's um, a part coming of age movie. It's part second chance. You know, I, I just too many parts. But Too I, felt many parts. Like, I felt like it all worked very, very well. Uh, I think that this is the best animated movie of 2018. I think this is the movie to beat for the uh, best animated feature Oscar over The Incredibles and over Wreck-It Ralph. What do you oh, think? Wait, are you making a prediction now? Yes, or I am. Or is that just like you prefer it? That's um, what you want. I am A, predicting, yes. uh, and it is what I absolutely what I want. Right. What do you think of that? There's no way this is going to 
beat a Disney movie in the animated feature. Well, see, here's why it's going to beat a okay. Disney movie. Okay, you think they're going to cancel each other out? Uh, no, I, yeah. because I, well, that's possible. Look right. at Ralph and Incredibles 2. Yeah. But the first Incredibles, I think, won the uh, Oscar for Best Animated sure. Feature in 2004. Yep. They're not going to give it to a sequel when they can do There's no other animated movie that looks like Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. The animation in this film was groundbreaking. It's part hand-drawn. It's part computer-generated. It's part 3D. It's something that we've never seen. And for a movie to do something that we've never seen in an animated feature may, and makes it stand out, stand apart from the rest, that's one thing it has going for it. Second is the way that uh, it tackles so many themes and issues. And, uh, you know, I feel like as far as comic book movies go and superhero movies go, we've seen so many of them in the last 20 years now. And here's one that's so different. And it's, 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 uh, it's vibrant and it revitalizes the genre in some ways and it raises the bar. I think this is the one to beat. I don't see those older Academy voters putting Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse screener into their Blu-rays and or DVD players and watching it and preferring it over something that's more old fashioned like Incredibles 2 or Ralph Breaks the Internet. I don't think it's going to win. Okay. I mean, I, it would be, actually would be a pleasant surprise because I like a good change and I like a good shakeup, but I don't think it's going to win. What's your letter grade for this? Okay, I'm giving it a B minus. A B minus. Yeah. I'm giving it an A. Of course you I'm are. I'm giving it an A. And listen. It's okay. I, 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 I listen, get it. I, I get it. I, I, full disclosure, I am a Spider-Man sure, film. It's for you. E even in a movie like Spider-Man 3 or Amazing Spider-Man 2, which are probably the least liked of the other Spider-Man uh -huh. films, I still thought those movies had their merits. Uh, and, 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 you know, I, I got to be honest, you know. So, yes, I did look for things to like, and I found things to like. But I also found things to not like. And there is something about Spider-Man 3 that Spider-Verse makes fun of. And I got a big laugh. And you'll know what it is when I see it. One okay. more thing yes. before we leave, which I will say, which was really nice, was there's a lovely tribute to Stan Lee in the movie. Oh, yes, there was. Maybe there was, even for that, I'll bring it up to a B because it was very it was very nice and they got it in. When I saw that movie, yeah. it was before Stan Lee had passed away. Oh. So when I saw it for the second time after he had passed away, when I got to his cameo, what he says in his cameo, not giving it away. I know. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe I it. I couldn't believe his words. Do not say what those I words won't. are. But when you see those words, you'll know what they are. The fact that I even remember it, and I've seen it, like, three, it was three weeks ago that I yep. saw it, and I remember the words. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's really a profound yes. cameo. It's, it's, and it's going to it's gonna be the one that stands out the most. Yeah. And it is a perfect tribute to Stan Lee and yep. everything that he represents. Yep. Agreed. Okay, let's move on. Okay. Mary Poppins Return directed by Rob Marshall. The movie stars Emily Blunt, Lynn manuel Miranda, Ben Wishaw. It's been decades, yes, 54 years to be exact, since we last saw her. But Mary Poppins hasn't aged a day, but she does look a little different. Now she's back to help the bank's siblings, and particularly Michael's children, get through a very difficult time. What did you think of Mary Poppins Returns? So I saw this very early. Um, full disclosure, I did a big interview with Dick Van Dyke and Lin-Manuel Miranda for this Fun. movie All for right. Parade. Yeah, so um, it was nice to see it before the hype machine settled in. And I saw it really, really raw and fresh. And I thought it was really well done, all things considered. Mm -hmm. Is it going to stand the test of time in 54 years? Probably not, but as a sequel to a beloved classic, I thought they Disney and Emily Blunt, Lee Manuel Miranda, and Dick Van Dyke in this cast, and the composer uh, Mark Shaman and, and Scott, Scott Whitman. Whitman. Yep. I thought they did a fantastic job, and I was I thought it was an enchanting movie that really captured the spirit of the original Mary Poppins. Okay, we agree. We yes. agree. All okay, right. we didn't agree on Spider Man, but we do agree on Mary Poppins. Okay, good. I agree for a lot of reasons. First of all, you know, the 1964 classic, which is where uh, Julie Andrews won her Academy Award for right. Best Actress, uh, talk about big shoes to fill. Yeah. Now, let's impossible just, shoes impossible to fill. Impossible shoes to you fill. can't. But, but not once. I've now seen this movie three times. I uh -huh. saw it three times in two weeks. Wow. For, I mean, because I had to for different reasons. Right. But, but I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed it more and more the, the more times I saw it. So Emily Blunt, who is a sensational 
one of the best actresses out there because she can do drama, she could do comedy, she could do action, Hello, Edge of Tomorrow. Never been sing. nominated for an Oscar. Never been nominated. Oh, wait, wait, wasn't she nominated nope. for Girl on the Train? Nope, nope, you sure nope, that? SAG. SAG, oh, okay, well, she deserves to be nominated for this. And here's why, because not once during this film did I think of Julie Andrews. Not a slight against Julie Andrews, but I was in the moment with Emily Blunt. I was in the moment with her because she owned it. She crushed mm -hmm. it. She did a great job. Uh -huh. I thought Lin-Manuel Miranda was terrific too. Terrific. Uh, there's a musical number there. I don't know how the hell he was able to say the dialogue, uh, the uh, the lyrics that fast while dancing around and doing his He's thing. He's a pro. He is a pro. He is yeah. a Pulitzer Prize winning yes. pro. Um, but I thought the music by Mark Shaman and Scott Whitman did sort of tip its hat to the Sherman brothers. Sure. Uh, there are a couple really lovely cameos. No, no spoilers on what those cameos are. Cameos are. I felt like this. It felt like a throwback it to did. The, the Disney musicals yes. of the past. Right. I don't want to say it was old fashioned because that sounds. It has like a negative connotation to it. But mm -hmm. there was a nice old fashioned where there's not a pop culture reference thrown at you. It's not meta. It is what it is. Yeah. I like that it was so old school Disney. The one problem, and, I, and the only problem I have with this film, you know, uh, the, the, the vibrancy of it, that the magic of it mm -hmm. was I felt uh, that the contrast was that the cinematography was dark. It was a bleak looking film. Hmm. It didn't, you know, there are a couple musical numbers where the, the colors pop. Right. And, uh, you know, the movie does uh, really embrace hand-drawn animation for for one of these musical numbers in particular yep. uh which is which is refreshing to see but but for a lot of the time like like it had a monochromatic look to it that that just like i, I wanted sort of a technicolor look to it okay. to match the tone and I the get spirit that. of it i get that but it is it is really sort of the only thing that struck out at, at, at me as a, a something that was taking me out of the film mm -hmm. but otherwise it is a feel-good crowd pleaser Right? Definitely. How can you not take your kids to this movie? Exactly. And it's a wonderful, you said enchanting. Yes. I completely agree with that. What's mm -hmm. your letter grade? Um, I'm going to give it uh, an A minus. I'm giving it an A minus as well. We're back. Ah, a girl. All Way right. to go. All right. Let's move on to Ben is Back, uh, written and directed by Peter Hedges. The film stars Lucas Hedges, Julia Roberts, Courtney B. Vance, a drug addicted teenager unexpectedly returns home on Christmas Eve and his worried, frantic, protective mother must help to keep him clean. What did you think of Ben is Back? I saw this one at the Toronto Film Festival in September. Mm -hmm. It was the last of the trilogies that we've seen. Beautiful Boy. Beautiful Boy. Boy erased. Right, Boy Erased, where it's like the, you know, the, the traumatized boy and the struggle and the, the affluent parent trying to help. Um, I think this was very solid. It was a pleasant surprise. I wasn't expecting much because I, Peter Hedges' movies have been all over the map for me, uh -huh. to be honest. But um, Julia Roberts and Lucas Hedges make this movie worth watching. Agreed. Because they, their performances, everything is expressed on their faces. And even when the story goes a little bit awry in the second half, they pull you through. And I was riveted throughout the movie because they carry it. And I love the chemistry between the two of them. And I would definitely recommend people see it. Okay, I feel the same way you did. Uh -huh. I saw the film at Toronto as well, I think with you. And uh, I did see it again more recently, just to sort of, you know, sure. refresh. And uh, the thing about Ben is Back is, it had it not been for the power of the performances, especially mm -hmm. Julia Roberts, yes. who I keep thinking about Julia Roberts and about how when it comes to a really meaty, deep, role that she can really sink her teeth into. It's been a while since we've seen her oh, deliver. I, I mean, decades? Like, like Aaron Brockovich. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, it where is her really best role. you really have that lead role where she's empathetic. And, yes, I agree. And, and as for Lucas Hedges, uh, also great in the role, uh, terrific in Boy You Raced. Mm -hmm. He also had a, a, a supporting role in mid-90s. But I feel like it's getting to the point where, oh, uh, you know, you're casting for a movie where you need a disaffected teen. Get me Lucas Hedges! <laughs> or Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, well, that brings us to the the other uh, movie about uh, you know addiction, which yeah. is a beautiful boy. And in that case, that movie, uh, I know, I think I liked it more than you, you did. You did, yeah, yeah, because it it was, I, it was too maudlin for me. Uh, see, that movie I liked more than Ben is Back okay. because Ben is Back was very straightforward to the point where it felt like a TV movie. 
I'll give you that. I think the, per the performances ra raise it above. I agree. Yes. The performances do raise it above, mm -hmm. but it was still very, very straightforward, which is fine. Mm -hmm. It's nothing wrong with being straightforward, but I like that Beautiful Boy had sort of this nonlinear, uh, you know, went back and forth in time. I thought it was a little more challenging in that respect, okay. a little more of a, uh, there was an artistic flair to it that mm -hmm. I thought this movie, I mean, it's perfectly fine going forward. I think the f it's basically two movies in one because it starts off the first half is one movie first half is better than the second half and too. The, the second half is uh second half something becomes, different yeah the second half is more of a darker chase movie almost. yeah yeah it's, it's like it's like two movies yeah both of them are pretty good i don't know if they work well together yeah and you're I right know. the first half is better than the yeah, second half yep. the uh, first half is when he's actually back Right, he's really back, and <laughs> then, then they're both gone. Then they're both gone, and then they're both back. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, but I still look. I mean, I'm not. Uh, I, I like the film. I, I I love the performances. What's your letter grade for Ben is back? I'm giving this one a B plus. I'm giving it a B plus as well, and oh, we are still on the wow. same page. We didn't okay. Even play on this. Two out of three uh, we're gonna on the we're same gonna page. We're going to disagree soon. Don't worry. Okay. Yes, we are. Might even disagree right now because right. we're talking about Vox Lux. Oh, boy. Okay. Written and directed by Brady Corbett. Cast is Natalie Portman, Rafi Cassidy, and Jude Law. It's a horrifying tragedy that inspires a young teenager to become a pop star. All right. Uh, go, Vox Lux. Let's hear it. Saw this one at the Toronto Film Festival with you. I yep. will not speak for you. I will just speak for myself in saying that I could not stand this movie. Why? And um, I was psyched for it. And I love the idea of Natalie Portman stretching herself to play a disaffected version of Katy Perry which is what she's trying to do. But it, this movie is not what you think it is. No, it's not. It, it is really, it's almost like a, a, a gruesomely violent meditation on how we treat celebrities. And I did not think that the violence in this movie redeems what we see. I, I mean, the message that, that, that they have, which is, I think Brady Corbett is trying to, something that we're supposed to, feel guilty for celebrity adulation and how it corresponds with a the, what's going on in the world, but it just didn't work for me. I didn't like the allegory behind it. And like I said, I thought the violence was such a turnoff. And I just, like the one word that popped in my head throughout watching this movie was this movie is so pretentious. It thinks it's trying to say a lot. It thinks it's trying to give this profound message and it doesn't to me. Okay, I, I saw the movie, we were at the same screening, but we didn't sit together. It was at 12.30 in the afternoon yes, screening, it was. right? At the, uh, was it the Elgin screening room? Yes, it was. Um, so, so my feeling about Vox Lux, having seen it twice now, was the first time I saw it, I thought it was going to be sort of like a sort of a, a black swan type of role. I wish. Which was where Natalie Portman won her Academy Award right. for 2010. And that's not what this movie is. It was not what I expected. Not at all what I expected. Right. Uh, and yes, you're right. It, the, the violence is, uh, I, maybe it's, maybe, gratuitous is, is a fair assessment of the word. Of, of, of the violence. It is uh, pretentious, but it, it is a provocative film. It is an engaging film. I was riveted by it. The second time I saw it, once I sort of knew, okay, now I know what it is. Mm -hmm. Now that I know what it is, okay. let me see if I change my mind okay. about it. And the second time, well, I didn't, I mean, I still didn't like love it to pieces, but I was able to appreciate, okay, I get what he's going for. He's trying to make a comment about the, the state of American society, about how we, uh, 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 you know, uh, with, with the celebrity and uh, fame and, um, you know, we've heard this all before, though. Well, well, it's like what new message is he giving us about fame? Well, I think he I think it's a bold and ambitious film in that Brady Corbett tries to to ask a lot of questions or pose a lot of things. Uh, it doesn't really try to answer everything. I mean, it, like I, I, I did think about it. It did stay with me. It's a disturbing film. It's an unnerving film. I thought it is I, unnerving. I saw it as a darker and much more disturbing version of A Star is Born. Think about it. I, I mean, I, I, I get the comparison of Star is Born, but a Star is Born, I mean, the, you have these stars exposing their vulnerabilities and there's this grand love affair and, and look, there's none the of way, that going on in, in Vox Lux. Well, but the way that, that the character in this film 
is, uh, you know, initially reluctantly, but then uh, it, the fame just sort of gets to her head. And uh, Natalie Portman plays the older version of the character in the second half of the film. Right. And Rafi Cassidy plays the younger version. And, and plays her daughter in the second. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yes. she does. Yeah. To make things more confusing. But I, I don't know. I just thought that it was Natalie Portman's best role since Black Swan. I thought that, that there was a lot to really stew on for this movie. It's not for everybody, but uh, I just loved how sort of it showed how you know, people in show business exploit tragedy. That does happen. Uh, just sort of the decline of American society. I mean, uh, that's something that's definitely provocative. I, it stayed with me the first time I saw it, but in a way that I didn't really know what to make of it. And when I wanted to give it another chance, I felt, okay, I get it. Uh, I was able to embrace it more for what it is. Not a perfect film, but it's definitely one that will start conversation and I would actually recommend giving it another chance okay I will give it another chance I have the screener but it's gonna be I, I just okay yes it's provocative because you see kids being shot up it, it, early on it's just why I can't recommend it's hard that. to watch it's hard, it's hard to, watch. to watch yeah but, but I agree for, but for what because of the, I, I just felt like, okay, this is all part of the story that, you know, what he's trying to address. And I think he overreaches, maybe bites off a little more than he can chew, Brady Corbett, the yes. writer director. But I still thought that for the most part, it was a very effective film. Hate to ask, but what's your letter grade? C minus. C minus. I'm giving it a B. Okay. I'm going to give it a B. All right. Okay. All right, moving on. Agree Final to film. disagree. Agree to disagree. Agree to disagree. That's, That's right. okay. That's what makes the show more fun <laughs> is when we disagree. That's all right. Because, you know, look, I mean, I love Spider-Man. Come, what can I say? All right. <laughs> Mary, Queen of Scots. This is directed by Josie Rourke. Her directorial debut. The movie stars Saoirse Ronan, Margot Robbie. Uh, Mary Stewart of, it, of Scotland attempts to overthrow her cousin, the Queen Elizabeth I of England, and she pays the price. What did you think of Mary, Queen of Scots. This was a little disappointing yep. to me. Mm -hmm. um, coming off The Favorite, which I have seen twice, and I loved it. And this, you know, maybe if The Favorite weren't around, I'd be a little more generous, but that's not a thing. The Favorite is there, and it's a better movie. And this is basically your typical corset, period, eat your vegetables kind of drama. Yeah. And I get it that there's two female leads and we should all be like, rah, rah, go two female leads, a female directs it. But just because two females are starring in it and a female directs it doesn't automatically, I can't give it a pass for that. Right, it right. still starts off extremely slow, convoluted. There's exactly one good scene in the movie. I won't say what it is. There's one good scene. It happens at the end, and we have to get through a lot to get to that one yeah, scene. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, the best scene was at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise, I, you know, having seen The Favorite twice as well, before I saw this, I love The Favorite. Yeah. Um, that movie was like scathing and witty and sharp and yes, crazy the writing good. writing was so yeah. much more on point. Crisp screenplay, yes. great performances. All of them got nominated for Golden Globes, uh -huh. uh, all three of those actors. Um, but this movie I thought was boring. I just it thought it was boring. Uh, it was a slog. It was dull. It did not grab me. Uh, I felt like watching it was a chore. Um, great acting by Saoirse sure, Ronan and, sure. and Margot Robbie. I mean, they always are good. Great cinematography, great yeah. production design, great wardrobe. But Hard the story. How screw that up, though? That's true. Well, yeah. Yeah. But but the, ultimately, it was the story. The script is the thing. It wasn't this thing for this movie. Uh, it's Saoirse Ronan's movie for the most part. Yeah, uh, Margot Robbie, it's not 50-50. No, People it's not. should know that going in. It's really a supporting role. Right, yeah, Margot Robbie's yeah. role is supporting. Uh, but, you know, they, they have one good scene together. They're, they're separate for, for most of it. But if you want to see a good period piece movie... <laughs> go see The Favorite. <laughs> go see The Favorite. I'm with you. What's your letter grade on this one? Um, C. Yeah, I give actually, you know what? You're generous. I gave it a C minus. Whoa. 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 Wow. Wow. These are okay. I well, won't tell Margo if you won't. <laughs> Listen, I am so happy to have you on the show. That's Finally. It? That's done? it. We're done. What? Can you believe it? No, that went by too fast. Don't we want to talk more about um, J Lo's second act, Aquaman? Uh, I haven't uh, seen any of those of movies yet. I haven't seen any of those movies no, yet. Wait, did what? you see Aquaman? No. Okay, did you see uh, a second act? No. Okay, well, then I'm that's why trying, we're not talking I'm about it. I'm just trying to fill time with you. <laughs> okay, well, we'll have more time because you'll have to come back. Okay. You'll have to fly out from New York to L.A. because I know we're going to see each other again and next month at Sundance, maybe that's two months true. later at South By, but definitely, you know, definitely there's a film Sundance. festival. Yes. We are there. Now, where can people follow you and find you, like on Twitter, Instagram, and all that fun stuff? 
Um, I am at very easy at Mara Reinstein at Twitter and Mara Movies on Instagram. Wow, there you yes, go. Fair, I keep it simple. Seriously. My name is so complicated. She is a great writer. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta you. check her out. You gotta follow her on Twitter at Mara Reinstein. You You're follow, the best, by oh, the way. No, you are the best, Mara. No, Come you on, give are. it up. Give it up. Look, feel the love. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Movie Mance. And make sure you follow me on Instagram at Movie Mance. And so next week, we got movies like uh, If Beale Street Could Talk is finally Ooh, in theaters. That's right. And then we also have Mortal Engines, and maybe I'll get into Aquaman. Maybe you should come back next time. But <laughs> but please do follow me on Twitter and make sure you share movie review talk. Make sure you comment below. Let us know what you thought of what we talked about. But be nice. Make sure you hit me up on Twitter at Movie Mance. Hit us up with a collider at Collider Video. Hashtag movie review talk. Make sure you share, share, share the podcast version. Comment on that too. But until next time, here's looking at you, kid. Hey everybody, Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode. You want to watch more? Then click up here. Or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. If you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.